There are around 440 nuclear power reactors operating across the world at this moment. Together, they produce around 10% of our planet's electricity, which is second to hydro. Nuclear power is the second largest source of low carbon electricity, which is incredible for in, in regards to our climate and also for advancing humanity into the future. But ever look at these reactors and wonder which are the most popular? Well, if you walked up to an average person and asked them what is the most popular phone brand, they would probably quickly say Apple and Samsung. Or if you say what is the most popular car manufacturer, you'd get responses like Honda, Toyota, and maybe other companies. So what about nuclear power reactors? What is the most popular type of nuclear reactor? And why is it that these reactor designs are popular? Well, it's simple. There are three, PWR, pressurized water reactor, Number two is the BWR, the boiling water reactor. And lastly, the PWHR or pressurized heavy water reactor. If you're new to my channel, my name is Osama Big. I have a background in nuclear engineering and on my channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies by simplifying them. Before we start, I'm gonna quickly explain how a nuclear power reactor works. It all starts with the heart of a nuclear reactor, which is the reactor vessel. So when I talk about nuclear reactors here in this video, it's actually the vessel that I'm talking about. Whether it be a pressurized vessel or it be a calandria, a non-pressurized vessel that holds hundreds of fuel channels, this is where the fuel is stored. So fuel is uranium dioxide. It could be enriched or non-enriched, which is cooled by water, okay? Nuclear fission takes place within these reactors, which is used to heat up water, which creates steam, and then is used to spin turbines. It's very simple. In the entire process, there's zero greenhouse gas emissions produced, which is incredible because as a world, we're trying to reduce our emissions and also mitigate the effects of climate change. All right, so let's deep dive into the most popular nuclear power reactor design, which is the PWR or the pressurized water reactor. So like I said before, this is an American reactor design. The very first PWR to ever be deployed for a power reactor was the Shipping Port Atomic State. This was a PWR uh, based off a submarine reactor, which was sized up. Now, what does it look like? It's a large cylindrical vessel, which holds the core of a nuclear reactor. Now the reactor pressure vessel or the RPV for short is the heart and core of the reactor. This is where the action happens. All right, so let's look into the core. Now the core is a vessel which is made up of hundreds of fuel assemblies. Fuel assemblies are stored within the core. Each fuel assembly is around four to five meters in length. These fuel assemblies have uh, are filled with pellets uh, that are made out of cer ceramic uranium dioxide and also enriched uranium dioxide, which is around three to 5% enriched uranium. Now, why enriched uranium? These reactors use enriched uranium because they're using light water as both a coolant and a moderator. All right, so if you're using light water, you need to use enriched fuels. In the case of heavy water reactors, they're able to use natural uranium dioxide. So what's the difference between natural uranium dioxide and enriched uranium? The difference is that the U-235 percentage has been increased. U-235 naturally is around 0.7% in natural uranium. This is U-235 is the isotope that does a lot of the legwork when it comes to energy generation, okay, and fission reactions. It's the fissile isotope when it comes to uranium. So heavy water, on the other hand, can be paired up with natural uranium. This reactor is defueled every 12 to 18 months where the fuel, around a quarter of the fuel, or sometimes one third of the fuel is removed from this, the reactor, it's put into storage, the other fuel assemblies are reshuffled and then new assemblies are inserted. So the question is, why is this reactor pressurized? The reason why this reactor is pressurized is to prevent boiling within the core of the reactor. The reason why is because there are complexities in this process and it, it would take me a while to explain the reactor physics behind boiling. However, boiling takes place in the secondary side of the reactor, which is connected to large steam generators. Now these steam generators are very important when it comes to nuclear power reactors because they are heat exchangers that exchange heat from the reactor core to the secondary side of the station. Okay, the secondary side is where steam is produced. Steam goes on to turbines, turbines spin to produce electricity. All right, so besides countries like Canada, the UK or Japan, this is the most popular reactor type. All right, so let's deep dive next into the BWR or the boiling water reactor. So this reactor is known for its unique feature of boiling actually taking place in the vessel itself. So similar to the PWR, this reactor vessel is also cylindrical in shape, but a little bit more truncated. Now, the difference I would say is 
used a PWR is more like an instant pot or a pressure cooker where the vessel itself is actually pressurized. Whereas a BWR is more like a kettle, okay? Kettle is because boiling is physically taking place within that vessel, okay? Now, why does one have pressurized system whereas the second have a boiling system? Well, the reason why is because the BWR, it doesn't use steam generators, okay? Uh, which is a very, a very a significant component within nuclear reactors. What is a steam generator? It's a large heat exchanger, which exchanges heat from the reactor core to the secondary side and, and uses the heat to boil water and convert that to steam, which is used to spin turbines. Now, steam generators don't exist within the BWR. And this is a benefit for BWRs because steam generators, number one, are expensive. Number two, they require maintenance. And number three, uh, you know, the reactor itself works very differently, it almost has um, equipment that mimics that of a steam generator within the BWR itself. Now, similar to the PWR, um, there are many similarities. However, another difference is the fuel itself. Okay, so a BWR has four fuel assemblies that have a cruciform shaped control blade in the middle, which are called fuel modules. Okay, so control blades in BWRs, instead of control rods, uh, like in PWRs, these are called control blade, okay? And in a BWR, the control blades come from the bottom up instead of from the top down. And this is very different from how uh, most reactors work. Uh, what are control rods, what are control blades? Well, they're made out of a metal uh, called cadmium, which absorbs neutrons. Once these blades go up or rods come down, they absorb neutrons and are able to stop a nuclear reaction. So also enrichment levels are very different in different parts of the reactor as well. So lower enrichment uh, can be found on the outside of the uh, the vessel. Whereas once you go toward the center, there is a higher level of enrichment. All right, so the next reactor type I'm gonna go into is my favorite. It's called the CANDU, the Canadian Deuterium Nuclear Reactor or the PWHR. Now CANDU reactors are very different from PWRs and BWRs. Uh, and we can start off with the vessel, the reactor vessel itself. Now you'll see that the shape of a PWR and BWR is a cylindrical shape. Whereas when it comes to a can do, it's more of a circle, right? It's not necessarily a circle, but if you take a almost like a tin can and flip it sideways, that's how it looks like. Now within the non-pressurized vessel, there are hundreds of fuel channels and fuel pressure tubes, which house the fuel. Okay. So instead of having a large pressurized vessel, you have hundreds of pressurized tubes, which are holding thousands of bundles, fuel bundles. All right, so a fuel assemblies in PWRs and BWRs are meters long, whereas a fuel bundle within a CANDU reactor looks like a fire log, okay? It's very small, it weighs around 60 pounds, and it's inserted by robots within the reactor. Why are robots inserting these uh, bundles? Well, the reason why is because the reactor is able to fuel and defuel while it's operating. So this is very different from PWRs and BWRs that need to be shut down in order to take out fuel assemblies, this reactor is on power fueling. So, you know, the advantage of this is that you can have this reactor for operating for several years at a time before it needs to go through a maintenance outage. Now, this is incredible because CANDU reactors have broken world records across the world for having remained online for years at a time. Another difference is the fuel itself. So CANDU reactors use natural uranium instead of enriched uranium. And the reason why is because CANDUs use a heavy water moderator and coolant. The difference between heavy water and light water is that heavy water has increased neutron efficiency. Okay, so when fuel is going through fission within a heavy water moderator, it can more efficiently go through fission, hence why natural uranium, which has a lower U-235 percentage, can be used, okay? So heavy water is a great moderator and coolant. These This reactor also has steam generators and very similar to that of a pressurized water reactor, goes through the same process. So the differences between the PWR and the PWHR can do is that one uses heavy water, one uses light water. One has a very different reactor vessel, uh, reactor arrangements. Um, and the second one is more of a standardized, pressurized cylindrical shape. Uh, and there you have it. There is this video I, I wanted to share with you, three of the most popular reactor types across the world, which are the PWR, BWR, and PWHR or can do reactor. Um, this is a very, high level overview of how these reactors function and pretty much how they work. Uh, so if you're interested in knowing more, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Uh, let me know what you think of this video. Uh, thanks again for joining me.
Take care. Bye.